What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to show you how to save your React app state to local storage. So when a user refreshes their browser or closes out the tab, their data will be persistent. This is super important because it gives your app a much better user experience. For example, if you have an app that allows a user to pick players on his team, and they pick a few players and then hit the refresh button, you'll see that all their data is lost and now they have to restart, which is a pretty terrible user experience. Instead, that data should be persisted on the browser so that they could pick up right where they left off. As I mentioned, we're going to be using local storage to persist the data. And if you're not familiar with what local storage is, it's basically key value storage on your browser that would just be persisted until you manually delete it. You can see your local storage by clicking inspect, and then going to the application tab and then to local storage in the bottom left. Here are all the keys and values that are stored on your browser. So we can add keys here and store values that will persist when the user closes the tab or refreshes their browser. I'm also going to be using React Context to manage the app state. And then we're going to add a few functions to help us sync that state with local storage. So with all that in mind, let's get into the example code. I created a code sandbox for the finished files of this video, but since we're only adding a few lines of code, I decided not to release these starting files. But you can look at the sandbox and still follow along. In our app, we wrap all of our components in this team context provider, and this team context is what we're going to want to sync to local storage. I open that up, you'll see that we just have a piece of team state here, and that's equal to this initial team which is just this object with a team property, which is equal to an array. You can also add other pieces of data like a team name or any other properties you want, but we just have the team for now. And this team array is gonna consist of player objects. So I define a static array with a couple player objects and each player is gonna have a few properties like an ID, a name, position, and image. So all we have to do in our app is add a player object to our team array and that will be displayed in the team tab. I also have two methods defined in the context, one for adding a player and a remove player method. And then I'm passing in those methods and our team object to the context. So all the children will have access to these methods and this team array. If you're not familiar with the context API, then you should pause this video and watch my explanation of it. It goes pretty in depth into how it works. And I think it would be helpful to know before continuing on with this video. So I'll leave that in the description below. The first thing we need to do is save our state to local storage. So when we call this add player function, it'll take the new player and update our app state. When we call set team, we pass it a function and get access to the previous state. And then whatever we return becomes the new updated state. So instead of just immediately returning the new state object, let's open up curly braces and just return that object. And then in here, before we return the new state, we can set a local storage. So let's first grab this object and store it in a constant. So we could do const new team equals this object. But now we have to return new team. And before we return that state, we want to set the local storage. And the way we do that is by calling local storage dot set item. And the first parameter we pass is a key for our item. So we want to do team. And the second parameter is the value we want to store. And the value has to be JSON stringified. So we'll call JSON dot stringify. And then we want to pass in the new team because that's what we want to save to local storage. And then once it's saved to local storage, we just return it and it gets set in our state. So if we go back to our app and go back to the local storage under application, you can see right now there's nothing there. But when we add a player, we get a team stored and there's that player that we added. We could add multiple players and they'll be stored in local storage. So now we can use this piece of code that sets the local storage and copy and paste it everywhere that we need it, which would include all the methods that update our app state. But as you could tell, that would be super repetitive and that would just be very inefficient. Instead, we want to create a listener function that listens for this team state to change. And anytime this variable changes, it's going to run a function, which will include saving that state to local storage. So we can accomplish that using the use effect hook. If you're not familiar with useEffect, you can call it like this. And the first parameter we pass is a function. 
And this function runs right when the component renders and then any time a variable in the dependency array changes. For example, if we have this function now, it'll run right when the component renders and then no more times after that because this dependency array is empty. If we wanted something to trigger this function again after it mounts, then we would just add a variable in the dependency array. So in our case, we want this to rerun anytime the team state changes. So we'll take this team variable and just put it in the dependency array. And then we'll grab this piece of code here and place it in the function. So now when the context provider renders, it's going to set the local storage based on the current team state. And then anytime we update the team, that'll trigger this use effect and it'll rerun the function. And it's gonna set that team to the local storage. We wanna change this back to team, and then we could just set this back to how it was before. Now, if we just go back to our app and clear our local storage, just start fresh. We can add a player to the team and you'll see that they get added here. We could add another player. And then when we call the remove, it should also update the local storage and it does. So now that save to local storage is working. The last thing we have to do is initialize our app state here with the data found in local storage. Because currently, if we have these items on our team in local storage, and you see they're selected here, but then we click refresh, you'll see that our app state goes back to an empty array. And so does our team here. And the reason for that is because when our provider renders, the initial state is this init team object. And this is just a static object. It doesn't take into account that there might be some data in local storage. So instead of just always setting the state to this static object here, we need to check if there's data in the local storage. And if it's found, then that should be the initial state. So let's create a function for fetching data in local storage. We'll come up here and do get initial state. It's going to be a function. And inside, we're going to try to get the team from local storage. So we'll do const team equals local storage, and we could call the get item method. And as a parameter, we pass it a key. Our key that we're setting is team. So we'll just say team. And then this method returns either a string, which will be the JSON stringified string, or null if it doesn't exist. In the return value, we want to check, was there a team found in local storage? If there was, then we want to call json.parse, and we'll pass in that team that was found. Otherwise, we're just going to return the default or initial state, which is init team. So now this function will check the local storage, and if it finds a team already existing, then it's just going to parse whatever data there is. Otherwise, it's going to return the default initial team. So now in our use state for the default value, instead of init team, we can actually pass a function that will return the initial state. So we just need to grab this and put it as the value for use state. Now, if we hit save, it should all work as expected. So I'll just refresh and add a player to our team, add a second one, and then when we refresh, it should pull that state. And you can see that the state is persisting. And I could remove these players and say, I just have one player here. And I close out this tab, and then I open a new tab. You'll see that I still have him selected, and he's on my team. The last thing I want to mention is if you want all of this data to be cleared when the user closes out the tab, then all you have to do is instead of calling local storage, you would just do session storage. And session storage works exactly like local storage, except that it removes the data once you close out the tab. So for example, if we add a player to our team and then we close out this tab and we open up a new one, you'll see that our team is empty. It does, however, persist across refreshes. So if that's the functionality you want in your app, then you should use session storage instead of local storage. And you can also see that when you inspect the application tab and then under session storage, you'll see the team there. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you want to see more content. I'll see you guys in the next one.